On today's video, guys, I want to do a little bit of a rebuttal from my Friday video, Top 5 Dumb Ways to Build in the South. And on today's video, we're going to review how it's been done and how we can do it better. Not just goals for energy efficiency and ways to make a terrible design better, but really I'm going to give you some systems, and specifically I'm going to give you three systems for a really well-built house with an excellent conditioned attic space. That's what we're going to focus on today. So let's go over to the computer here and let me show you a few images from some houses uh, that I've built and that I've been a part of over the years. So first off, how's it been in Texas and what does it look like for many southern houses? This is an example of a very typical uh, 1970s construction house down here in Texas. Slab on grade construction, we've got a single story with a hip roof on top. And here's what it looks like inside that roof. This is an attic that was built, you know, almost 50 years ago now. Fluffy stuff on the bottom, some duct work up there. But as I was investigating this one for a remodel, I found a lot of areas like this. We've got missing insulation. We've got a sheetrock from the ceiling visible below. My guess is that, the, is that this house was very uncomfortable to live in with this type of insulation and ducting up in the uh, unconditioned and very hot attic space. Now fast forward another couple decades. Here's a house that I ultimately did a remodel on. This is a pretty typical Texas Tuscan style. Uh, for some reason, Texas loves our Italian style houses. And, uh, and so we built a lot of these over the years. Now this house only built about 15 years ago. Look at this attic, really, really similar to the 1970s attic, even though this was built around uh, 2000 or right around that decade. And look at this attic now. We've got, again, ducks up in the uh, super hot uh, vented attic space. We've got recessed cans poking through the insulation. You can see in the back here, we've got some venting up there. Really not much had changed over those 20 years. Now let's fast forward to a new home. I'm gonna actually go back to the internet over here. Here's some images of just, I just kind of Googled Texas new home, and it's interesting how all these images look very, very similar. But here's a house that uh, a friend of mine built, a uh, production builder, but this is really an attic that's very common, whether it's production uh, or a custom builder. And look at that attic, just really similar to those other attics that I showed you not too long ago. Ducks up there, maybe some newer looking fluffy stuff. Now we've got a radiant barrier deck up there, so we've got some silver up top, but for the most part, that attic is very much the same. Those are dumb attics. Now they've worked, they haven't leaked, and if they did leak, they probably dried well because they were ventilated, but they were not energy efficient and probably not very comfortable as well, and the indoor air quality is not the best. So now let's switch gears. Let me show you three smart ways to build. An easy way to go from a conditioned, or pardon me, from a ventilated, unconditioned attic to a conditioned attic is spray foam. This is used by builders all across the country, but especially down here in the south where we've got slab on greater crawl spaces. We don't have a lot of room for our mechanicals in the basement. This is a really easy way to take a standard house, either retrofit or new construction, and we can take that spray foam and spray it right here to the roof line. Look at this house. This is one that I built. Uh, probably eight or nine years ago, and all we had to do was spray that open cell foam right up on the underside of the deck, and now we've cathedralized our attic. Now all the mechanical systems are within that air-conditioned space, so think about this HVAC system now. If we've got some leakage around these ducts here or any of these boots, it's going to leak into the open envelope. It'd be as if this ducting was in our living room and it leaked, no big deal. Now this attic is not particularly uh, meant to be conditioned. We don't have vents and registers up here, but we've got enough leakage typically on a system that we've got a, what was considered a semi-conditioned attic. Now when I built, if I were to build the same assembly today, I'd actually talk to my mechanical designer about putting a specific supply vent into that attic so we could make sure that that attic air was semi-conditioned and really was dehumidified. That's really important, especially when we're building in the hot, humid south. So we'd actually probably put a small supply up here. This is the return side, but a small supply uh, in this area over here where we're gonna get you know, maybe 20 CFM or 30 CFM of supply air into this space. Again, that's really for dehumidification purposes. And now this attic up here is gonna be maybe three or four degrees hotter than the rest of the house. Compare that with those other houses I showed you from the 70s, from the 90s, and from today that are built with attics at 
130 degrees, 150 degrees maybe without a radiant barrier decking. Crazy hot. And when the furnace kicks on in those unconditioned attics, it's depressurizing the house. And so as a result, the house is trying to suck in air to make up for that. And that's, that's a double whammy for energy inefficiency. The ducts up in that super hot space, they're only like an R6 or an R8. We've got lots of radiation from the sun beating down, heating up that attic. And we've got that depressurization every time the furnace kicks on from leaky ductwork up at that attic. Doing an attic like this makes a whole lot of sense. However, there are some details that you need to be cautious of. For instance, look at this photo. This is a gas furnace that's up in a conditioned attic space. And look how we get the venting for that furnace. We really need to stop using standard 80% gas units or even 75% efficient and go to the 90 plus furnaces. These are going to use PVC venting because they've captured so much of the heat from that gas flame that the exhaust air is very cool. So now we can use a PVC vent in to bring the air into the sealed combustion burner and then we can vent out on PVC. This through the roof here, it's a little hidden behind this spring that's uh, kind of dampering the unit from vibration and vibrating the floor below. But this is what's called a concentric vent. That's a PVC pipe that's gonna stick through the, uh, the roof and then we can put a roof jack on that. Or even better, we can put it through the walls. Now, how do we get to that roof? We need to pay attention to some of the details. For instance, here's one that I did a few years ago. Here's your rafters coming down. And normally, if this was going to be an attic where we've got fluffy stuff here and we're insulating on top of the, uh, the lid or the drywall ceiling, we're going to have bird blocks in here for airflow. But in this case, we've got these solid block. There's a two by in here, and then we've got some OSB, and we've solid blocked that. Now, where you can see the light coming through, we need to seal those up. And you can seal that with either open or closed cell spray foam. But if I'm going to do open cell on it, I actually like to come in and do a bit of a pre-foam ahead of time. Let me scroll down here and I'll show you what that looks like. So in this case, I've sent one of my carpenters into the attic and we've used a closed cell can foam. All the foam that you buy that's in a can is closed cell foam. And we've gone through in any light that we're seeing, we've gone ahead and used closed cell foam on there for maximum uh, durability, for stopping of airflow and vapor flow through there. And then this attic ultimately got sprayed like this to be an open cell. I won't go into the, all the differences now, but if you're in the south, you can use open cell successfully. If you're in the north, you need to be cautious about that because you've got vapor that can go through open cell. And so you want to typically in the north use closed cell foam if you're doing this type of attic. Okay, so next, what if you don't like spray foam or what if you're worried about spray foam in your envelope? Uh, a couple things I want to recommend. Number one, I'm going to put a link to this in the description below, but uh, Green Building Advisors, Martin Holiday, super smart building scientist. He has a great blog post on how to create this conditioned attic with some great points on here. I don't want to go through all this, but uh, there's Martin right there, and I'm going to put a link in the description of this. You really want to read this before you do a conditioned attic and just go in and spray foam it. Um, but, oh, I know, one more thing I want to show you, apologize. This is a video I made a couple years ago on changing codes and moving to 2014 and 2015 codes. I want to show you what that looked like with a truss roof. And here's one that I did, uh, it looks like around 2014, that had a truss roof and spray foam. And look at that, that spray foam is adhering to that roof deck and works really, really well with traditional uh, trusses. So even if you're not doing a rafter house like that other one with hand cut rafters, you can do this as well. But here's one I want to show you. If you're not a fan of spray foam or you don't want to uh, spray foam in your attic, you can use other insulation methods. Owens Corning's come out with this just two or three years ago. They call this their uh, Pro Pink conditioned attic system. This is actually just their display from the International Builder Show. Kind of a cool system. It looks like this. They basically net uh, the attic, kind of like you're going to do a blown in bibs system. And you can see it gets stapled to the side of the rafters or the trusses. And then this right here is a netting that expands out and, and forms kind of a balloon in there that they can fill with loose fill. Now you gotta be cautious when you do this because you wanna make sure there's no airflow into the attic. So you wanna pre-foam this. And I'm sure if you use an Owens Corning contractor, they've been trained in that. But there is, a, in my mind, a little bit more of a um, kind of risk when doing this. So you really gotta pay attention to the details. But if you don't like uh, spray foam, this is a really good way to do it. 
Another way that you can do it, if you want to, uh, again, keep very cost effective, is do a method like Allison Bales talks about in this blog post. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he runs energyvanguard.com, a great building science blog. Again, I'll link to this post he did a couple years ago. But he's an energy, or pardon me, an HVAC designer, and he has a great blog post on plenum trusses. I've heard of lots of builders doing this, uh, even production builders who are very cost sensitive, and so this could be a way to do it, bringing those ducks into the kitchen space if you're worried about cost. So right here, traditional truss, and here's a plenum truss. It basically makes a boxed out space. And now instead of having this big mass of ductwork up in the attic, Check out this, this photo right here. Maybe a little hard to see, but he's got the ducts inside that bay that's being created with that truss. And now all this duct work, look how small this is. It can be in the center. Uh, you can design your house around this. And now he's probably got a uh, ceiling register, or pardon me, a wall register right here for these bedrooms. Everything's nice and compact. It's been designed correctly, fits within that space. And then you can put traditional fluffy stuff uh, above that and this is an airtight drywall so now you don't have any airflow between there and the attic this would be a great way to do a conditioned attic on a budget bringing all those ducts down into that space and the last way that I want to show you let me go back to my uh, to my keynote presentation from uh, from over here is I want to I want to take a minute to talk to you about perfect wall I don't know if you've seen my videos on this if you're new to my channel I'll, I'll put a playlist down below but this is a house that I built a couple years ago with a system that's incredible that I'm gonna give you just a brief on it. But basically, the system is one where we utilize all exterior insulation, no interior insulation. So here's a house that was designed by Rouser Design that we built a couple years ago. And you can see the house looks like a big Monopoly piece. No overhangs framed at this point. And the reason why is we wanna run our waterproofing, which is also our air membrane, continuous from the foundation all the way to the ridge and then back down to the other side again. The house is wrapped totally and completely with this membrane. The membrane uh, goes on as a peel and stick product. Um, this is actually a primer that gets applied to the shear wall uh, prior to installing it. And then you're gonna uh, roll that membrane on and we actually rolled it vertically, installed our windows and then used the detail sealant. So this house was 100% waterproof and airtight and also vapor tight at that outside layer. Now here's what the framing looked on the inside when we were at that stage. Um, we sheathed it with one by sixes on the inside so it would look like an old house, because remember we're not gonna put inside insulation on this house. And as a result, we ended up not using sheetrock on the house as well. But I'll come back to that in a minute. Looks, let's take a look at what the outside looked like. Once it had been wrapped with that membrane, then we took a couple layers of exterior insulation and blanketed the house with that. It'd be kind of like if it was cold outside, would you rather put a sweater on or an insulated jacket, or would you rather stuff that insulation in between your ribs? This puts a giant sweater on the outside of the house. Look at this roof line here. We've got two four inch layers, uh, pardon me, two three inch layers of foam on the outside. That's poly iso. So it's outside foam, not inside foam. And when we were done, we completely wrapped the house. I think we had uh, four inches in the walls, six inches in the roof, 100% continuous. And then we put a rain screen batten on top of that. This is a, basically a one by four that's screwed through all that thick exterior insulation into the studs. We also did that on the roof line so we could um, put the metal roof and still have some airflow up there. Uh, here's kind of a detail of what that metal roof looks like. So now we have a condition space below, meaning the attic and the house itself was part of the condition space, but we did vent the roof. Again, venting the attic versus venting the roof. We're talking here about roof venting versus attic venting. So now if we get any moisture or air that gets passed here, it's got this drying space. And in fact, we want airflow underneath that roof panel to keep everything nice and dry and to uh, ventilate that space. Okay, and let me scroll back down here. Now, even if you weren't doing the walls uh, on your house, you were gonna insulate your walls traditionally, you could still do this outside insulation uh, on the outside of the house. And then here's what the inside of the house would look like. Let me, uh, let me scroll down here a little bit. 
There's a couple photos as we uh, wrap the house in some metal. And ultimately, here's the inside of the house. We didn't need sheetrock because all the insulation was on the outside. We had to do a couple tricks to make sure that we didn't have any fire chases and that we met fire codes. But here's the attic uh, for this house. The attic was basically a bedroom space. This was all within the conditioned envelope. And in fact, instead of using ductwork, we ended up using a Mitsubishi mini split system to heat and cool the house. But here's the, here's the rafters. These are structural rafters, and here's the bottom side of the roof deck. And because we have that outside insulation, this house incredibly comfortable. And again, we didn't need to use spray foam in the inside or some other ways to insulate that. I'm going to show you a couple images of this house, then we'll wrap up the video. But I wanted to show you what the finished house looked like. Isn't that a cool house? I had a lot of comments uh, on Friday's video about how expensive I build my houses. I'm really proud of this one. You know, we built this one uh, for not much more uh, than a lot of houses in America. This is a, a house that was um, somewhere just a little north of $250 per square foot to build. And look at this incredible uh, house that we were able to build. Small house, not very big, but some amazing building science and really some really, really pretty and interesting interiors as well. And there's the inside of the house. Guys, thanks for joining me as we talked about how to make that change from traditional and vented roofs to these conditioned and unvented attic spaces. I gave you a couple systems, but these systems are ultimately going to lead to houses that are much more durable, much more comfortable, and very, very efficient. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hit the subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.